Um, so let's now turn to health systems and uh, a perspective from health systems and healthcare workers. So I turn to you, uh, Robert. Merci, Michel. Uh, Permettez-moi tout d'abord de remercier Thierry de Montbrial et le staff du World Policy Conference. C'est un très grand plaisir d'être ici et j'allais dire d'être ici physiquement et de retrouver des collègues, des personnes et des experts que j'ai eu l'occasion de retrouver à Marrakech. Merci à vous. So I will give the standpoint of healthcare providers. Uh, I'm a physician, I'm the CEO of a hospital which had to take care of thousands of patients since February last year, and I would like to share with you our perspective. I would like to insist on three points. Number one is how important it is to have a coordination of healthcare providers. Number two is, as was said, the problem of the question of anticipation of uh, what can be a pandemic. And number three is a technology. But just before, uh, I cannot not say that we have to have gratitude for all the nurses, all the doctors which were at the forefront. Uh, in my hospital, I had nurses which just came out of the school. They were 20, 22 years old, and they had to fight first line with uh, Uh, this uh, war, in fact, and we had uh, hundreds, we, in fact, we had one, more than 100 of our doctors and nurses which were ill, some of them very seriously. Thank God we had no death casualty, but there was some death casualty, so we have to have our gratitude for this person. So let's come with the coordination of healthcare providers. What makes the fight effective is a coordination between general practitioners and hospitals, between the private sector and the public sector, something which doesn't, is not obvious. Most important was the coordination orchestrated by public agencies. In France, in the Paris region, which is approximately 10 million people, you have l'Agence Régionale de Santé, the, the regional healthcare agency, and they played a key role in distributing the protective The, the drugs, when there was a shortage of drugs, in distributing the masks, when there was a, a shortage of masks, in triaging the patients, and in at some point making the decision to evacuate some patients from the Paris area to other regions. This was paramount. Second is anticipation. In anticipation for healthcare providers, there is a scheme at the level of hospital, and it's called emergency plans. Unfortunately for France, we had emergency plans which appeared to be very effective following the terrorist attacks in November 15. So we, we know how to deal with an influx of wounded or death, and we had to reactivate these plans uh, for the pandemics. It's called Le Plan Blanc, the white, uh, the white plan. And this was the case for all uh, French hospitals. Number two, of course, in terms of uh, anticipation, equipment, personal protective protection equipment. Uh, I remember very well, at some point in our hospital, we didn't have enough masks for, uh, for uh, everybody. And I can tell you that I felt very bad with the idea to send a, a nurse and doctors into a room of a patient without the masks. Then, of course, there are the respirators and the drugs. More important is anticipation for infrastructure. Today, in Germany, or in 2020, sorry, in Germany, there was, in terms of intensive care unit beds per 100,000, the number for Germany was 34. The number for France was 16. The number for Italy was 8.6. And so the decision to increase this number of beds or not to increase is of course paramount because either you get the, these infrastructures or you don't get them, and this is key. Even more important in terms of anticipation are the skills. You can have the respirators, you can have the beds, but if you don't have the properly trained nurses and if you don't have the properly trained intensivists, reanimators, doctors who worked in reanimation, and this takes seven to 10 years, to take this person. So it's a long run that you have to do. Number three is technology. So I'm not an expert, but everyone, everybody understands that getting the vaccines in less than a year was unprecedented. 
Jean just alluded to big data, digitization, data governance. It's very clear that it played a role and that it will play an even more important role. We all know that medical progress for wars, unfortunately, let's say that it's a good side effect of wars. I remember very well during the first Gulf War, there was a sending from imaging, medical imaging, CTs, literally from the battlefield to the vessels, to the, with, with the, uh, the, Na the US Navy vessels with hospitals, and from there to Germany. And this was able to make a better triage of the patients and to evacuate the patients. In the years after, the US Army uh, uh, healthcare system invested one dollar out of two in digitization. Today, hospitals are completely digitized. We share images, we share data, and this was really a, a very important uh, move and clearly linked to a uh, benefit of, uh, of the war. I would like to conclude on uh, another point, which is uh, the weight of politics uh, for healthcare providers. Of course, uh, if you are a healthcare, if you are in charge of a hospital, uh, what is paramount is the uh, amount of money that the nation will spend, let's say in terms of GDP, if you are at less than 10, more than 10, of course it has an impact and we all understand and we all follow year after year how much the government, etc., will invest in healthcare. But in the case of the pandemics, it was much more immediate, it was much more uh, consistent. Let me give you one or two examples. Mandating vaccination. Before, France has been resistant to vaccination for whatever cultural reason, but before the summer, in health French hospital, the level of healthcare staff which were vaccinated was around 60%. Then the government and Macron decided to put that mandating vaccination in for all healthcare staff in the hospital. Today, we are at 96, 97%. So it had an immediate effect. The effect of politics was absolutely immediate. Number two, as Jean said, was fighting disinformation. Today, the reality of intensive care units in France is that we get patients in which refuse to be vaccinated for all these crazy reasons. So we have to fight effectively this disinformation. We have to reinforce, of course, the cooperation at the international level, as Juliette said, because we know that if we don't help, if we don't work with Africa, we will have the consequence in the future of not having been able to work properly with our African colleagues. And finally, I would like to say something. Of course, uh, what the, we have learned over the last uh, year and a half is that the state have reinforced their role and probably rightly so, but let's not fight in the future the previous battle. What is emerging very rapidly today is the GAFA. The GAFA today are not today prominent players in their healthcare, but they will be. They will be in the next five to 10 years. They will play a very important role. And so let's not forget these things and not just fight the battle of the past, but also the battle of the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. And thank you for, among other things, um, stressing again the importance of anticipation and, and preparedness, uh, which other colleagues have already uh, also discussed. Clearly, too, too many national um, plans have been underfunded and too many countries um, haven't, have lacked solid preparedness. Uh, this is a, a key issue. Many countries have preparedness plans, but these plans are not funded. And this is, one, this is why one of the first aims of this international financing facility that the G20 is discussing, that the independent panel has been proposing, is to fund preparedness across the world. And then in an interdependent world, we need to be mutually accountable for how we prepare. And this is why uh, on the initiative of France and, and Germany, among others, uh, in Geneva, we're now discussing a peer review of preparedness in a UN-driven mechanism, similar to what's happening at, at the Human Rights Council, where countries would be reviewed by peers every year 
uh, or every second or third year for, their, uh, for how they move in, into preparedness. Thank you very much again.